My dear students, let's start Unit 4 in our English World Book. Its title is Astonishing Structures. Astonishing means fantastic. Fantastic structures. Abnea, Mutisha. Great places to visit. Amakan, Azim and Naktazurha. Special city tours. Tours, Gawalet. Don't miss Matfawitesh. The Winter Palace. It's a name of uh, a place. St. Petersburg, Russia. What you can see. Great glittering holes. Salat Lama, wide marble staircases, Salalim Wasam Nerukhem, hundreds of rooms of paintings and a treasure, 3,000 years of art and objects from Europe and Asia, Min Urubba Asia, colorful gardens, Hadaik Mulawana, amazing views. Manazir Mutisha over the river Neva and St. Petersburg. Where to find it? You can also visit special exhibitions, Ma'arat Khosa, the gift shop, Mahal Hadaya, the cafe, Makha, open every day except Monday. مفتوح كل يوم ما عدا الاثنين. What visitors say? It took my breath away. يعني بيبهروا. David USA. There is so much to see. So much to see. حاجات كتير تشوفها. Isabel, France. I have never seen a building like it. Joe, Australia. It's a fantastic place to visit. Masha, Russia. Masha, Russia. Special city tours. The Winter Palace. Online reviews. El Ard. اللي على النت بيقول ايه When I first saw the Winter Palace I couldn't believe my eyes It is huge and it seems to go on forever Means it's so big I really like the green walls and the tall white columns والأعمدة البيضة الطويلة with gold at the top there are even statues on the roof في تماثيل على السطح It looks like a big surgery cake كأنها كيكة عليها سكر You must go inside the palace because it's stunning 
Mutish, there is marble, rukham, and gold everywhere, with huge chandeliers hanging from the ceilings. Wunagaf mu'allaq min al asqof. The lights make everything look shiny and new. It's amazing to think that for two hundred years people lived in it all the time. Now the winter palace is full of treasures, Malian Bilkinuz from the past. Minil Modi every room has something wonderful. I really enjoyed my visit. Here are two taps for other visitors. Two pieces of advice. Nasahteen. Number one. Wear comfortable shoes. Ilbis hazak murih. Because you have to walk a lot. Go in the morning because there are long queues in the afternoon. Fi tawabir tuila baad al-dohr. Lok, Canada. I wanted to see everything in the Winter Palace, but you can't see everything in one day. There were rooms full of paintings, but I like the precious objects the best. حب الحاجات ال ذات قيمة عالية أكتر حاجة. In one room there's a shiny gold ball. في زي طور من الذهب اللامع. From the tomb of a nomadic chief. Nomadic chief يعني زي زعيم بدوي. Tom means مقبرة. It's hard to believe that it is more than four thousand years old. Hadish she said that in عمره أربعة آلاف سنة. It is unusual. شيء غير عادي. Because there is a hole in its back. في فتحة في ظهره. When the archaeologists, لما علماء الآثار opened the Tom, they found four balls. لقوا أربعة من استيران المزا الذهبية. There was a silver rod في عصب عصاية أو عصبة in the back of each ball. في ظهر كل واحد. The rods held a can of pee. والعصاية مسكة أو شيلة زي أبة over the body of the chief. على من فوق جسد الزعيم أو القائد ده. We're going to London with special city tours next week. الأسبوع الجاي هنروح لندن في جولة خاصة. We're going on the London Eye. هنركب لندن أي. A ride on this huge wheel, the ركوب في العجلة الضخمة دي is called a flight. بيسمى رحلة طيران. I hope it's good. It sounds really exciting in the leaflet. تبدو أنها شيء مدهج جدا وشيق جدا في الكتيب. After that, we're going to the pyramids at Giza. هنروح أهرامات في الجيزة. We're going to go inside the Great Pyramid to the King's Chamber, the King's Room. I think special city tours are great. Carla, Spain. The London Eye, London, England. What can you do? Take a 30-minute flight on the tallest wheel in the world. خد رحلة 30 دقيقة على أعلى عجلة في العالم. Rise up in a glass pud. 
to 135 meters above the ground على ارتفاع 135 متر من الارض study the engineering of this amazing structure ادرس هندسه المبنى ده المدهش what you can see famous london buildings bridges the river thames 40 kilo metres across England on a clear day. Fium Sophi. Now, let's do this exercise together. Choose the correct answer. The Winter Palace is on the river. Yes, Neva. Number two. The staircases are made of, yes, marble. Number three, the palace contains art and culture. Culture means thaqafa from Europe and Asia. Excellent. Asia, Asia. Archaeologists found a gold ball in the tomb of a chief Carla is going to go into the king's yes chamber room in the great pyramid number six you can see 40 kilometers across England on the London eye Now, now, name these pictures. Look at these six pictures and name them. The first one is, yes, canopy, qubba. The second picture is chandeliers, chandeliers. And this is a leaflet, Kutayib. Staircase. Gift shop. And this is a column. Column. Yes. Now, let's learn about adjectives that end with ed or ing. Number one. Adjectives end with e i n g they describe the characteristics of someone something or a situation i can say it's amazing this book is interesting number 2 they describe someone something or a situation that cause you a feeling when I say this film is boring this means the film causes this to you makes you feel bored number two adjectives end with ed they describe the temporary emotion or feeling of a person or some animals. When I say, I'm tired, it's a temporary emotion. I'm bored. I'm interested. I'm excited. So the adjective that ends with ed describe my temporary emotion or feeling now let's do this exercise together complete the sentences with the correct word in brackets number one the view from the top of the London eye is yes amazing 
I'm speaking about the characteristics of the view from the top of the London eye. So I choose an adjective that ends with ing. Number two, the children were very, yes, excited about their visit to London. I'm speaking here, here about their emotion, their feeling. Number three, Luke said the treasures in the Winter Palace are astonishing. I'm describing them. I'm speaking about the characteristics of the treasures there. Number four, visitors are always, yes, interested in the history of the Winter Palace. You're right. Number five, Carla said, I was, yes, astonished by the gold ball. I'm speaking here about her emotion, her feeling. It didn't look old at all. Number six, Loke said, our next visit to is to Egypt it's very yes exciting I'm describing the visit I'm describing the characteristics of this visit next let's learn about the present perfect tense we use this tense to talk about an experience at some time in our life life up to now. We do not say when it happened. To form the present perfect, we use a form of have, have or has, plus the past participle of the verb, and we no normally use the short form of have. For example, she has been to Australia. We choose here has because the subject here is she. Then we put the past participle of the verb be. Another example, they have seen kangaroos. We put the subject they, then we add have then the past possible of the verb. The present perfect in negative. For negative meaning, we add not or never before the past possible of the verb. For example, she has not or she has never visited the winter palace. Another example, they have never or they have not flown to London. Ed Darcy is a famous explorer. He has visited. We put has, then we put the past possible of the verb. Many countries in the world. But when we form a yes or no question in the present perfect, we start with have or has, then the subject, then we add the word ever before the past possible of the verb. For example, has he ever been to Africa? Yes, he's been to Africa. The apostrophe is, is here is an abbreviation of uh, has, of the word has. Another yes or no question. Has he ever been to China? Again, we start with has, then the subject, then the word ever before the past possible of the verb. And the answer here is... No, he's never been to China. Has it ever been to South America? 
Yes, he's been to South America. Has he ever been to Peru? No, he's never been to Peru. Now it's your turn. Choose a place and ask about it. Yes, for example, Egypt. Think how will you form a question, a yes or no question, in the present perfect? Yes, you're right. Has it ever been to Egypt? Yes, he's been to Egypt. Or, no, he's never been to Egypt. That's right. Now, let's study this dialogue and learn these sentences together. Ken, have you traveled much, Daisy? Yes, a bet. Have you ever been abroad? Abroad? Hal safertin al kharik? Yes, I have. Where have you been? I've been to England, Spain, and America. Wow, lucky you. Have you ever been to Africa? No. I've never been there. Apostrophe VE, that is the abbreviation of the word have. How about you? Have you traveled much? No, not much. And I've never been abroad. Never mind. You'll go one day. In this dialogue, we find yes or no questions in the present perfect tense and WH question in the present perfect tense. In the WH questions, we start with WH word or question word, then we put have or has, then subject and the past possible of the verb. Which countries have you been to? Which town or cities have you visited? I've been to America. I've visited New York. I've been to Russia. I've visited St. Petersburg. Which? The WH word which is followed by the noun that I'm asking about. Which places would you like to visit? I'd like to go to Dubai. I've never been there. I've never been to America. I'd like to go to there. Now, we will complete the sentences with the word from each box. Number one. It dare say, yes, has visited many countries. Number two. It's a question. So we will start with has. Has he ever? Yes. Has he ever been to China? It's a yes or no question. Number three. We, yes, we have never eaten Chinese food. Eaten is the past participle of the verb eat. Number four. Linda has never Yes, seen the sea. Number five. It's a, qu a question. It's a yes or no question. So, with, with the subject, they, the children, we will start with have. Have the children ever heard this story? Number six. 
These girls, yes, have never played football. Make questions use ever. Number one. Has he ever been to Russia? Number two. Yes, you're right. Has she ever seen the Winter Palace? Number three. Have they ever eaten English food? And number four will be, has he ever played tennis? Next, make sentences use never. Number one, we have here the verb visit and the word London. So, the sentence will be, she has never visited London. Number two. Yes, he has never made a cake. And number three will be, they have never heard an orchestra. And number four will be, she has never flown in a plane. Next. Complete the sentences with the verbs in the box. Be careful to use the correct form of the verbs. Here we have six verbs. Take, see, be, climb, have, and play. Number one. Yes, have you ever been to abroad? Have you ever been abroad? Number two. Have you ever played chess? Number three. I have never taken a good photograph. And number four. I have never had a holiday abroad. Number five is a yes or no question. So it will start with have. Have you ever seen the London Eye? Number six. I have never climbed the mountain. I have never climbed a mountain. Next. Complete the conversation. Use the words in the box. Wow, fly, ever, never, lots, visited, abroad, mind, been, and lucky. Now complete the conversation and use the previous words. Jemmy, how many countries have you? Yes, visited Uncle Bob. I don't know Jemmy. I've, yes, I've never counted. Have you? Ever been to America? Oh, yes. Lots of times. Have you ever been to Australia? No, but I'm going to. Yes, I'm going to fly there next week. Wow. Lucky you, I've never been abroad. Never mind, you've got lots of time for traveling. Yes, you're right. Now, 
Complete the sentences with the verbs in brackets. Use the present perfect. Number one. Have you ever been to London? Number two. Yes, I have never seen the pyramids. Number three. Lucy has never heard an orchestra. Number four. Have the children ever, yes, flown a kite? Number five. Fred, yes, has never eaten Chinese food. Number six. We have never played tennis. Excellent. Now, make questions and use ever. We will make yes or no questions. Number one. Yes, it will be. Have they ever played football? Next. Yes, has she ever had a pit? Number three. Has he ever made a cake? Number four. Have they ever been abroad? And number five will be, has it ever caught a mouse? Now, we will make sentences use never. We have here three words. Yes, the answer will be, I have never played chess. Number two, we have, she read that book. Yes, the sentence will be, she has never read that book. Take care, the the verb read in the infinitive is the the same spelling in the past possible but I read it read she has never read that book number three they yes they have never arrived late they have never arrived late number four Yes, he has never washed his car. And number five, we have never been to the theater. Number six, it has never snowed here. Now, let's learn this rule in phonics we can add un to the beginning of some words we make a new word with the opposite meaning usual عادي. when i add un it will be unusual it's the opposite of this word غير عادي. it's unusual because there is a hole in its back. Exercise 1. Add UN to these adjectives to make opposites. Write the words. The first one, it's kind. Kind means good. Tayyib. The opposite is unkind. Happy. It will be unhappy. غير سعيد. True. حقيقي. It will be untrue. Friendly. ودود. It will be unfriendly. Usual. 
unusual. Now let's do this exercise together. Use words from activity 1 to complete the sentences. Number 1. Dan was because he couldn't do his homework. Yes, the answer will be unhappy. Number 2. Mr. Brown never says hello to us. He is very unfriendly. Number 3. You must never be space to little children. Yes, unkind. The story of Jack and the Beanstalk is untrue. It did not really happen. This bird is yes unusual because it makes a, its nest under the ground. Exercise three. Add un to these verbs to make opposites. Write the words. Wrap will be unwrap. Do will be undo. Cover will be uncover. And fold will be unfold. Use verbs from exercise 2 to complete the sentences. Number 1. My little brother can't undo his coat, so I help him. Number 2. When Anna gets a present, she unwraps it as quickly as she can. Number three. The archaeologists will yes, uncover the runes very carefully. Number four. Let's unfold the cloth and cover the table with it. Write the word with the opposite meaning. Number one. Happy will be unhappy. Unkind will be kind. Friendly will be unfriendly. And untrue will be true. Thank you for your watching. Thank you.